That's Jos. What's good, guys? Welcome back. It's your boy Yusuf Renee, and welcome to Jos and Yusuf. And we have our special guest today, Red. Do you go by Red um, Zeno, or is it just Red? Hey. It's honestly like the name is professionally red, but it's it's much easier to just go by red. Okay. Let's do that. So we'll we'll get and dive right into the first segment, which is sit and sip. Will you give a little synopsis of yourself, what you do, what type of music you do, where you're trying to take it? Oh, the floor is yours right now. Yeah, thank you, bro. Um I know that well, basically I make music kind of a little more experimentally. It's not rap, it's not hip hop, it's not pop. It's kind of somewhere in the middle. So, you know, I make music. It's kind of like nighttime vibey type music. Um, yeah. I mean, now that, you know, summer's coming, it's getting a little more positive type music. So it's it's kind of reaching this higher vibrational type music. But yeah, I'd say I can't really give myself a genre, but I, for the most part, I like to make nighttime music. And for content, like every song that you hear of me is always about someone, you know, a shorty or whatever. And yeah. whenever... I make music. I like to bring my spirituality into it and my my deeper values as a human and as a spiritual person. I like to kind of mask that in my music as a girl. So it's not like, you know, down with the system or anything like that. It's like, yeah, you, know, you, you did me wrong. You had me set up from the start. It's I like to mask my stuff and and bring like a spiritual element to to my music. Well, that's what's up, man. That's dope. Yeah, I got the chance to hear some of your stuff, and you're real dope, man. Thank you. Love how eclectic you are and how different. Where are you um, originally from? I heard. Uh, I heard you say. Yeah. Are, are you like from uh, Canada or uh, like somewhere up north, northeast? Yeah, I'm in Canada. I'm. I grew up in a small town called Woodstock. Um, okay. And then I moved to Toronto for a bit. And now I'm living in nice. London. And uh, yeah, originally, originally, like I'm, I'm half Chinese and half Canadian. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, because I I think I went to Toronto uh, and I performed at the Canadian Music Festival like yeah. years back. Yeah, I, there is a large population of uh, Asian there too, so it makes that's that there will be a mix in there. Oh, it is. So that's dope, man. So we're gonna move to the, the meat of the show, which is talking give, which is the main uh, interviewing portions. The segment is called talking give, and the first question is, what's been the most memorable moment in your music career? I would say the most memorable moment was I did this show in Toronto in February and it was like the first show that I'd done in years because I just, I wasn't consistent. Like I started making music maybe seven years ago and like people always ask me like, when did you start doing this? It's like, you know, I started, I made songs back then, but like I've been grinding now. So yeah, my most memorable moment in music was doing this show in Toronto because, you know, I pulled up with my girl, the homie, and then we did the show at Lang Kang. Um, okay. It was in the uh, Jane and Finch area. And, like, I've I've never been down and performed like that. And with the amount of people that came out, the other artists too, like, it, it gave me, like, a whole other spark to why I do this. Seeing the, uh, the audience reactions, uh, the feedback, pushing out all these new songs, it just... It, it brought me back to my roots and it, it gave me perspective on how much further that I, I can go still. That's dope, man. So would you say it's been a challenge or uh, easy to make music? I know a lot of big artists have been coming out of Canada. You have Drake. You have, well, quite a few artists. That's just the one of the biggest ones. So how how's it been in the music scene there? Here, it's honestly, it's not much different than the U.S. Like, we do like we have a lot of like charting artists. Like we, we we've got Drake, we got Tory, we got Nav. Yeah. I don't know if Nav's really popping as much right now, but um, we got? we got Justin Bieber. I don't. Oh yeah, we got a lot of people out here. But like the scene here is a little more. It's it's a little bit less teamwork. It's a lot more fight each other to get to the top. Mostly cool. in Toronto, not Canada at whole, but. Yeah, I, I have been seeing a bit of a, a shift that, you know, a lot of artists are reaching out. They're like, yo, we got to do this. Like, we got to do this together. We got to not tear each other down to get our, our ourselves out there. It's 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 mostly the same as the U.S., but it's, it's shifting. Definitely. Yeah, I thought it would be different, you know, um, since we have the social media thing, all of this other stuff. That it is. We don't have to compete as hard no more. 
because you're not just working the, the scene. You literally can just do music from your, your bedroom, from the comforts of your home, your phone now. So it's crazy that you still have to compete with other people or be put into an unwanted competition sometimes. It's really, we just all want to just make music and, yeah. and spread love and evoke emotion. Yeah, that's real fun. So what challenges have you faced and how did you over? One with how you mentioned how we can do everything in, you know, our own rooms. Uh, that's mm. one because I did not, I've went to a studio. I went to two studios before and this is way back. And I, it's not the same because it's like one, your ego is kind of out there. It's, it's, it's kind of doing weird things. You know, you want to yeah. be the baddest. You want to sound like a, like a badass. But, you know, when you're making music in your own crib, like you can just let, let it all out and just kind of do your own thing and you know especially me who mixes everything it's like i can get everything out and get mm -hmm. it to, to sound how i want it to without having to do all that which is nice about you know the modern music industry um but i'd say another challenge is kind of getting out and doing shows because i'm i'm somebody who just likes to just you know chill like I, I don't really jump around and all that. And that was, that was something I kind of struggled yeah. with at, at my show in February. But uh, kind of getting out is is a necessary thing that you have to do when you make music. Is you got to show people, you got to connect right. with people and network. Network. Um, but it, I find it easier to network online. But it's not as authentic as it is in person. I mean, right here, like me and you right now, we're here. Right. It's not as authentic as if we were, you know, face to face, breathing the same oxygen. But in a, in a way, it is too because the beauty of online is you can reach people around the world that are strapped right here. Because sometimes you can't even reach people that are around the block or five miles away. Sometimes it is True. the one that's like in Canada or East Coast or in a whole other country. I, I work with a lot of people around the world, and it's due to the internet. So it's dope that you can still do that. So how how do you find inspiration when creating new music? Every song I make, bro, it's every song i make i want to do something different mm -hmm. than just make music because if i just want to make music of course like at some point something dope is going to come out of it but if i go into it just wanting to make music and being like i got music i got content we're chilling like like the music industry right now if you look at rap for the most part it's it's so there's no there's nothing there there's no substance it's words mm -hmm. okay great you can spit bars but like what else can you really do are you putting any emotion any creativity right. trying to inspire like what is your message other than i shot him down the street you know i got these bands in my pocket it's like that's great right that's that's amazing it's so what now what and the thing is that people eat it up and i have no idea why and i think they're putting something in there man i don't know frequencies or something i don't know bro it, it is about frequency though that's what makes music so powerful because it is frequency it is and for your your mind and your memory bank and it evokes that emotion. And sometimes the songs that we can't stand, but we don't know why we can't stop singing them or hearing them in our head. Yeah. It's like they're putting some type of witchcraft in that crap or something. Weird. Y'all yeah, gotta be careful what you are listening to. Cause right. What you need your mind. Energy. Yep. Up in this energy is the spirit that, that behind music. That's why it was made for certain things, but it's like people definitely don't use the right reasons. This is really about, it's a money grab right now. That's nothing to do with the power, you know. Well, they know the power, so that's why it's a money grant. Yeah, you know, they know it has been doing the power. It does. Um, what advice would you give to an aspiring musician? I would say to keep your values straight. If 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 someone walked up to me and they're like, "Yo, um, is there something you want to like teach me? Some wisdom you can pass down on to me?" Is keep your values in line, and don't lose yourself in the music. Because it's really easy to do that. It, you start making music, and then it can go to your head so easily. Especially when you make music, and you're, portray you're portraying somebody else, especially if it's not you. You know, like mm -hmm. Studio Gangster, go in the studio, rap about guns. If you're not doing that, you, you start to lose in your own music. And mm -hmm. especially now with the content game, it, I, like, I still kind of struggle with the content game because it's, it's fresh, it's new. You got to kind of keep on top of it 24-7. But yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, you gotta. Re you just gotta remember why you do things, and just right. be mindful of the message that you're trying to spread. Most definitely. Well, do you find yourself? I know not every artist is um, 
finds their niche at some point, but do you find yourself wanting to follow this? Or do you stay true to yourself and in that innovator and uh, creator? I trends are something that I I don't despise them, but I I don't like to follow them and I don't like to promote them. But it's hard because nowadays, like it's it feels like you have to follow the trends if you're going to get anywhere. Right. But personally, I I don't like to. I like to just make my own content and stay away from the trends as much as I can because it. One, I don't like trends. Well, depending on the trend. If it's something right, yeah, some purposeful. Cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If it's purposeful and there's meaning to it and, you know, it's worth following, then I, I'll definitely hop on it. Um, but other than that, content, just the most authentic that I can be with my values, with what I want to mm-hmm. preach is, is is how I want to keep it. That's what's up, man. So who, who would be your uh, five dream collabs? Dead or alive? Yeah, okay. Uh X, he's on there. Hundred percent. Nice. Uh he he was my inspiration for a long time. Um X I think Drake. I, I feel like I gotta say that because like from Canada. Right. Everybody who grows up in Canada listening to music, like Drake is right. like, he's up there. I mean, I mean it, he definitely has I love him. I hate him. Too, yeah. Right. Oh yeah. I mean I, I love like, the non-stop. Whole Drake. He doesn't miss, honestly. Um, Never. I'm not like a like a fanboy or nothing to Drake, but like mm-hmm. honestly, with all this rap beef right now with him and Kendrick, I have not followed any of it. Uh, I don't know anything was going on there. Like I just I haven't right. I, I haven't had the. But I almost feel like they do it as a promotion, like with Fifty and who, who do with Ja Rule or someone back in the day. Like some people, they do it um, for promotion purposes too. Like Kanye did it with um, I forgot was this Fifty? I don't remember. It was a long time ago. But it was more so for promotion. Like, they were both in on it. I almost feel like it's helping to boost both of their uh, projects. Because Drake just dropped one, and Kendrick is about to drop it. Or he probably just dropped I didn't know that. But that, yeah, yeah, that would make sense. With the guys, you know, they tend to be in cahoots. But unfortunately, with the women, obviously, they, it's usually real personal. And if they did that, it'll be a, you know, a better game for them. But yeah. continue. Was that your fun? Oh man, okay. Uh X Drake. Um I'm gonna spice it up a little bit. I throw the wallows in there. They're like, a, like an indie band. Um oh. honestly I don't really have anybody specific other than maybe mm-hmm. like X because Bro was like a legend. Things that he would say off mic. Uh amazing. Mm-hmm. But there's nobody really specific. I mean I love all music, I'll say. Yeah. Maybe I like positive music especially. Um, just cause you know, the frequencies and energy and the, the lyrics that you absorb into your head, like it's going to stay there. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say any, anybody else specifically, just people who got the right energy, the people who make moves, the people who want to push the right messages. That's what's up, man. So we're going to move over to the hot things, um, segment, although it's going to be a little bit different because we're doing it remotely. Um, but I'm still going to give you the five spicy questions, music related, that um, you just give me your best answers for. So we're going to get this started. The first question is, what is the most embarrassing moment you've had on stage as a performer? I, uh, I At my last show, I yelled out because I was noticing that I was looking out at the crowd and it was like yeah. kind of in between songs. So people were kind of like in this in between station i don't know how to how to crowd work yet i'm still i'm still getting yeah there. i'm looking at people and nobody's really looking at me yeah so i'm like i want all of their attention i want your full awareness right now so uh right before the song like the beat dropped in the song i just yelled at them i was like let me see some fucking eyeballs here and it was like the most absurd <laughs> random thing but i mean it worked people were like shit what's he talking about and then yeah the beat dropped I started bopping. So, I mean, it was a bit of recovery, but it's really, it was an awkward moment for sure. Yeah, because everybody's on their phones now, man. Even at shows, I wish they can ban it, but even though you need the content too, because the fans are potential new fans, that's how they look you up. They Shazam you, they make videos, they post it to their social media. So, I mean, that's a blessing and a curse at the same time. But I mean, it is. That's a crazy one. And sometimes I still feel uncomfortable when I don't on for a while too because it's been a hot minute for me too the next uh next question is 
if you could collaborate with any artist living or deceased, I think we just did that one. Let's go with deceased or would it be any other genre that you mentioned quite a few uh, hip hop hits? Yeah. What about any other genres? That are alive? What would be like a dream collab? Like, if it was a hip hop R&B, would it be a pop artist? Would it be a, a reggae artist, a reggae call, whatever? Afro beats artist. I think I'd throw uh, I'd throw a uh, Tupac in there. And oh. the thing yeah. is, is that, like, you know, everybody want to say Tupac, but I started writing Dope this though. song, I think two weeks ago, I was, I was just kind of spitting off the top. I had like this flow and it was, it was, it was like an anthem. Um, mm-hmm. it, was, it was all about like, uh, like the rain's power and, and, you know, very down with the system type music. Um, yeah. and the flow, it sounded like something Tupac would have wrote. And I can hear, every time I go back to the, the studio session and I listen to it, I can hear Pac's voice through yeah. it. And, and it's, it, I find it hard to keep working on it and then to release it because it doesn't give like a, like the same vibe of music that I already make. It's not like a very me song, but it's just very powerful. And it, like, yeah. yeah, I would say Pac because I'd put him on that and it would, it would go nuts. Yeah, Pac is, he's that dude though, like very inspirational. Like he, he was that dude though. So it was that's he, definitely a, a a dope one right there. Yeah. So, what's your guilty pleasure song that you secretly love that nobody? Would... There's uh, I can't even. I can't give you one song, but I can I can give you an artist would would probably be the Wallows because I mean mm-hmm. the music I make it's not it's not indie it's not punk for the most part I've made a couple but yeah yeah I I say the Wallows because they're just very positive. And they make like this uplifting indie music, and it's it's so like wavy and you know sun and type music, and like you know I don't really have that that Hawaiian shirt, like I don't know I don't got that that vibe all the time, but I say the Wallows and that that indie that punk indie vibe. Uh, that's what's up, man. So what's the what's one misconception people have about being? Where do they get it wrong, and where do they assume about the process of being an artist, or what it's like being? An people get it so twisted. They think it's either one of two things: either one, you're popping off more than how you make it look like on social media, or two, they think you're really struggling and. And you're just kind of, kind of like a kid when he's in yeah. kindergarten scribbling, making arts and crafts. It's 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 making music is a is a tricky thing because it's it's an art form, but it's not always so crystal clean slate, or it's not always so down and and dirty. It's it's art in general is is messy. Being a musician is, it is. messy. It's yeah. there's no. There's no consistency into being a musician. And then there's artists who are under a label and under amenity mm-hmm. who are forced to be clean slate. It's there's there's a huge misconception because it's it's you know, you gotta you can make music when you feel like it, or you can make it consistently. And I can guarantee that ninety percent of the time if you make it when it feels right, it's gonna be a lot better than when you feel like you have to. Exactly. It feels feel like a like, job. But yeah. It's not. It doesn't. You're right. At, at times, it does. The aftermath, like after the studio, when it's actually feeling like a job. Yeah, I'm following you, Stoke, man. I, I've changed my process when making music now, too. I used to feel like I had to get in there because I had to sing all my movies. Now, everything is improvised. I don't even yeah. study the uh, music no more. I just go in there, we'll just play beats. I freestyle the song, we arrange it, I write it, re sing it, and then boom. It's all about capturing that feeling and in a moment when you initially feel, hear that music versus living with it too long, you end up either not doing it or taking forever to write it or it just never happens. I feel like the process has been more productive since I just go with that moment because that's the most important thing. Yeah. At least somewhere down the line, you lose the feeling when you're trying to orchestrate a little bit too much. But let's do it, man. Like that, I'm gonna take so we're going to move over to uh, a segment I call Sopa Serenades, a segment where Red will uh, treat us with a fantastic performance, or Kaiser. So you cool. take it from here, Red. 
So uh, we're going to come to a close with the Rockwing Gems uh, segment. So it's been an incredible episode. It's been awesome getting to know you, Van. You did amazing. It was great getting some insight with you. But before we wrap it up, uh, Brad, could you drop a gem of wisdom for uh, our Josters or listeners? Absolutely. Um, what I want to say is that everybody out there, uh, a drop of wisdom is to stay conscious, uh, maintain your level in your presence, and understand the importance of the power of now. Because every moment that we have is precious. And especially those who are creating, don't forget to remind yourself often why you create and just stay true to yourself and stay true to every moment that you walk in. Thank you so much, Ray, for joining us today and sharing your talent with us. Thank you. And to our listeners, remember, uh, be chasing your dreams and never stop creating. But until next time, let's go. Appreciate you, Red. Thank you for stopping by, man. Um, it was dope. It was fun, bro. Did great. Hey, you. No doubt, man. Um, it's all about uplifting the artists. That's the only reason why I'm doing this. Uplift everybody and, you know, spreading the word, getting you in front of more eyes and more listeners. So it's all about, man. You're real well. I appreciate you. And enjoy the rest of your day. I don't know what you got planned for the rest of the Sunday. What time is it over here? It says like a three hour difference. 5.30. Are you in Canada or are you... Um... Yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay. Yeah, bro. Yeah. I mean, if I'm ever in LA, I'll hit you up. So hopefully one day, man. But until then, I mean, I appreciate your time. And hopefully you keep... Well, not hopefully, you will keep rising. So keep doing great music and, and inspiring people and doing great things. I, keep, look, I look forward to keep supporting. Thank you, bro. I will too. It was nice to interview you, man. You have a good one, man. You too. Peace, bro. Peace. So you seem to sound some with them so easy. She's like, I'm listening to the sound, so sound. There was so all the angles. Turn it on every year. Prime the rest of the ball. If I am completely flat, I was trying to connect out with your canal. You get some sights to that eye street. You want to stay so nice. Man, see my way so I'd fold line to you. You are the ass of a fire and you sound like I'm the opposite to you. You are it, don't you?